Hey everyone, it's Professor Permson. In this video, we're going to talk about limits involving infinity. In this section, we're going to talk about two new types of limits that involve infinity, and these are called infinite limits and limits at infinity. What we're going to find out is that infinite limits and vertical asymptotes are related to one another, and they describe the behavior of the graph whenever the graph is unbounded or the graph grows or decreases indefinitely when you're near a vertical asymptote like x equals a. And then we're also going to find out that limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes are related. And we're going to find out how does that determine the behavior of the graph whenever x assumes arbitrarily large positive or negative values. In other words, when x grows arbitrarily large or x grows arbitrarily negative. So x approaching infinity or x approaching negative infinity. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to locate vertical asymptotes for a rational function, how to use a vertical asymptote to describe the behavior of a rational function near a vertical asymptote, and also how did that relate with infinite limits, how to find horizontal asymptotes for a rational function, and then also how to use horizontal asymptotes to describe the behavior of a graph when you're near a horizontal asymptote, and how does that involve limits at infinity. Okay, so before we talk about that, let's start with infinite limits and limits at infinity. Infinity is a concept that describes values without boundaries. So this is the symbol for infinity. On the x-axis, infinity is far to the right end of the graph. So on the x-axis, if you're going far and far to the right, that's when x is approaching positive infinity. And negative infinity is very far to the left. So if your graph is going to the left forever, then x is approaching negative infinity. On the y-axis, positive infinity is very far up on the graph. So your y values are approaching infinity. And if it's negative infinity, the y values are going very far down. So y is approaching negative infinity. Okay, infinite limits. We're gonna talk about those types of limits first. So infinite limit is a limit whose value, so when they're talking about the value of a limit, that's the y values. The limit value is either negative infinity or infinity. So if the y values are approaching negative infinity or the y values are approaching infinity, this is called an infinite limit. So let's see how these are related to vertical asymptotes first. So if C is any real number, and you have the limit as x approaches C from the left side of x equals C of some function, and your y values are either infinity or negative infinity, or if the limit as x approaches C from the right side of x equals C of, this, of a function is either plus or minus infinity, then we say that this number, x equals C, is a vertical line and a vertical asymptote for the graph of the function. So in other words, if your y values are tending towards infinity or negative infinity on the left side of x equals C, and your y values are tending towards infinity or negative infinity on the right side of x equals C, then x equals C must be a vertical asymptote because the graph is growing arbitrarily large or decreasing arbitrarily small. So here's a couple graphs to illustrate what happens at a vertical asymptote. So on the left side of x equals C, your graph could grow arbitrarily large. So these is, this is where the y values are approaching positive infinity when x is approaching c from the left side. But you have to be a little careful with rational functions like the one that I have graphed here. Notice that on the right side of x equals c, the graph is decreasing arbitrarily small. So the y values are tending towards negative infinity instead. But this dashed line is not part of the graph. This is just a line that represents the vertical asymptote at x equals c. On the other hand, you could have a vertical asymptote at x equals c again, but the graph might tend towards negative infinity or positive infinity together on both sides of the vertical asymptote. So on the left side of this vertical asymptote at x equals c, if you're approaching x equals c from the left side, the y values are tending towards negative infinity. If x is approaching c from the right side, the y values are also going towards negative infinity. So they could be going to infinity on one side, negative infinity on the other for the y values, or they might be going to negative infinity together, or they might be going up towards positive infinity together. Okay. So these are four rational functions. Recall that a polynomial function has hills and valleys. There are no vertical asymptotes for a polynomial function, since the domain of a polynomial function is the set of all real numbers. So for interval notation, you would use negative infinity to infinity for the domain for a polynomial function. So how do you find vertical asymptotes of rational functions? You may have covered this in college algebra. A vertical asymptote of a rational function will occur when the denominator of the function is zero but the numerator of the function is not zero. So it's whatever makes the denominator zero, but not the numerator zero. All right, so that's about vertical asymptotes and infinite limits. Now let's change our attention to what's called limits at infinity.
So limits at infinity are what happens when x is growing arbitrarily large towards infinity or negative infinity. So limits at infinity, if f of x is a function and your x values are approaching negative infinity for some function and your x values are approaching positive infinity for some function, these are called limits at infinity. So it's what happens at the far ends of the graph, the far right end of the graph and the far left end of the graph. Those are called limits at infinity. So again, this, these two graphs give you an idea of what happens with horizontal asymptotes and involving limits at infinity. So if you're looking at x growing arbitrarily large, so if x is growing towards infinity and your graph is approaching the x-axis, like this graph does, then the x-axis, or y equals zero, is a horizontal asymptote. So as x gets really, really, really large, so if you go to the right on the graph forever, it looks like this graph will get closer and closer to the x-axis. So the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. Same thing what happens when x is approaching negative infinity. It looks like the graph is getting closer and closer as you go to the left, far left end of the graph, towards y equals zero, or the x-axis. So again, the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, or the equation y equals zero. Okay, the only thing about horizontal asymptotes is that you can actually cross a horizontal asymptote. You cannot cross vertical asymptotes. So in this second graph, notice that on the far left end of the graph, it looks like the graph is going towards this line. Again, horizontal asymptotes are not part of the graph, so that's why you represent them with a dashed line. So this line, y equals l, is a horizontal asymptote, and it looks like the graph is getting closer and closer to that horizontal line as x is approaching negative infinity, the far left end of the graph. And at the far right end of the graph, it looks like the graph is getting closer and closer to y equals l. But notice that the graph does cross this horizontal asymptote. That can't happen. With horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity, you're not worried about what happens in the middle part of the graph. You're worried about what happens at the far ends. So the far right end of the graph, there's a horizontal asymptote because the graph starts to level out towards y equals l. And the far left end of the graph, it looks like the graph is leveling out towards y equals l. Okay, so now that we know what horizontal asymptotes look like for a graph, let's talk about how to find horizontal asymptotes using limits. So let l be any real number. So statement number one, if the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is l, that means on the far left end of the graph of f of x, the y values are getting closer and closer to this y equals l. That means that you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals l. And on the other hand, statement number two says, if your limit as x approaches positive infinity for a function is l, that means on the far right end of the graph, the y values are getting closer and closer to l. That means y equals l must be a horizontal asymptote. Now, something that you may have learned in college algebra class is that there's a way to find out horizontal asymptotes for rational functions very quickly. So suppose that f of x is a function that's a rational function, where that means the numerator is a polynomial and it has degree n, and the denominator is a polynomial function, and the degree of the denominator is m. So what that means is that this function f of x can be written in this form. So the numerator is a polynomial, so a polynomial can be written this way, where the a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub 1, a sub 0, all the a's are coefficients, and then you have powers of x. The highest power of x says that the degree of the numerator is n. So the highest power of x is n, the next highest power, n minus 1, all the way down to x to the first power, and then x to the zero power. Same thing for the denominator. The denominator is a polynomial of degree m, so all the coefficients are b sub m, b sub m minus 1, b sub 1, b sub 0, all the coefficients are the b's, b's with a subscript, and then the highest power is m, means x to the m is the highest power in the denominator, and then x to the m minus 1, x to the first power, and then x to the zero power, and so on. So case number one, if n is less than m, so if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero which is the x-axis. So that means on the far ends of the graph, the graph will get closer and closer to the x-axis, which is y equals zero. So you will have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, case number two. If n is greater than m, so that means the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. In other words, the graph does not level out towards a horizontal line, y equals l. The graph will just grow indefinitely large, or it will decrease indefinitely small. So the graph will not level out on the far ends of the graph. And then case number three, what if the degrees of the numerator and denominator are the same? So if n equals m, then the horizontal asymptote 
can be found, it will be the equation y equals, it's found by taking the ratio of the leading coefficients. So notice that the leading coefficient is the coefficient in front of x of the n in the numerator. So that's the numerator for the horizontal asymptote. And the b sub m is the leading coefficient for the, the polynomial in the denominator. So that's the denominator for the horizontal asymptote. So the ratio is y equals the leading coefficient a sub n divided by the leading coefficient b sub m. So what that means is that the far ends of the graph, the graph will start to level out towards the equation y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. So here's three examples illustrating these three cases. Okay, so for example, let's say you have a function f of x equals 3x squared plus 11 divided by 4x cubed plus 6. So to figure out where the horizontal asymptote is, if there is actually a horizontal asymptote at all, you figure out the degrees of the numerator and denominator. So the degree of the numerator is 2, because that's the highest power of x. The degree of the denominator is 3. The degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. That's case number 1. So that means your horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, or the x-axis. In other words, the graph will level out towards the x-axis on the far ends of the graph, the far right end and the far left end. Okay, case number two. g of x equals negative 2x squared plus 5 divided by x minus 1. In this case, the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 1. So the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, and that's case number 2, which means you have no horizontal asymptote at all. In other words, the graph will not level out towards a horizontal line on the far right end or the far left end. There's not a horizontal asymptote that exists. Okay, and then case number three, let's say you have a function h of x equals negative 4x squared plus 11x subtract 6 in the numerator, negative 18 plus 5x squared in the denominator. The largest power of x in the numerator is 2, so that's the degree of the numerator, and the largest power of x in the denominator is also 2. So be careful, it may not be written in descending order for a polynomial. This one has x to the 0 power first, and then x to the second power as the second term. The degree is still 2 in the denominator. So the degrees are the same in the numerator and denominator, and so now that means if you have the same degrees, the horizontal asymptote will exist, and it's this equation, y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the equation for the horizontal asymptote is negative 4 is the leading coefficient of the numerator, and the leading coefficient of the denominator is 5, which is in front of the x squared term. y equals negative 4 fifths is the equation for the horizontal asymptote. That's the line that the graph will get closer and closer to as x goes to infinity or as x goes to negative infinity. All right, so now that we have all the definitions out of the way, let's look at an example. This example is going to show the connection between infinite limits and vertical asymptotes, and then also the connection between limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes using a graph. So example one, graphical approach to limits involving infinity. The graph of y equals f of x is given in the problem. Evaluate the following infinite limits and limits at infinity, and discuss any vertical and horizontal asymptotes that you see in the graph. So number one, Find the limit as x approaches negative infinity for this function that's graphed. So we're looking at as x approaches negative infinity, that's the far left end of the graph. What happens? As I'm going towards the far left end of the graph, it looks like the y values, which is the value of the limit that we're looking for, the y values are approaching the x-axis. So the y values are getting close to zero. So the y values are approaching zero, which means that the graph is getting closer and closer to the x-axis as x gets closer and closer to negative infinity. Okay, number two, find the limit as x approaches positive infinity for this function. So in other words, this time we're looking at the far right end of the graph because x is growing arbitrarily large. So as I go to the right on this graph, it looks like the graph is getting closer and closer to the x-axis again, which is y equals zero. So the limit is equal to zero. The y values are approaching zero, and the graph is getting closer and closer to the x-axis as x approaches infinity. Okay, number three. This time, let's find out the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side, so it's a one-sided limit, of this function. So it looks like at x equals 2, you have this dashed line. That's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So we're looking at what happens to the graph when x approaching 2 from the left side. So as you get closer and closer to x equals 2 from the left side, it looks like the y values are growing arbitrarily more and more negative. So the y values are approaching negative infinity. So as x approaches 2 from the left side of the vertical asymptote, x equals 2, 
the y values are decreasing without bound towards negative infinity. And then number four, find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of this function. So looking at the graph again, if I'm approaching x equals 2 or the vertical asymptote from the right side, it looks like the graph is growing arbitrarily large. So as x approaches 2 from the right side of the vertical asymptote, then the y values are increasing without bound towards positive infinity. So in this example, we've used the graph to find out the value of a limit involving infinity. Now let's look at actually how to evaluate a limit involving infinity using a table of values. So we're going to use a graphing calculator for this next example. All right, so example two, numerical approach of limits involving infinity. So this time, let's consider the rational function f of x equals 1 divided by x minus 3. So this is a rational function because you have a polynomial in the numerator, which is just 1, and you have a polynomial in the denominator, which is x minus 3. One thing that, that you might have done in college algebra is find out the domain of a rational function. So the domain of a rational function is where is the denominator 0? So if you make the denominator not equal to 0, that tells you that x cannot be equal to 3. If x is equal to 3, you will not get a y value back. You'll have f of 3 is 1 divided by 3 minus 3, and that's 0 in the denominator, which means undefined. So x cannot be 3 for the domain of this function, and if you want to write the domain using interval notation, it's all real numbers except for x equals 3, which would be negative infinity to 3 in parentheses, union, because you want to group this with another interval, 3 to infinity, also in parentheses. So let's use this function to evaluate the following limits and also discuss any vertical or horizontal asymptotes for the graph. But this time we're going to use a table of values. So number one, find the limit as x approaches negative infinity for this function, 1 divided by x minus 3. And we're going to find out what the limit is using a table of values, this table. So to generate a table of values very quickly, we're going to use a graphing calculator. So the first thing to do, go to y equals and enter in the function, 1 divided by, make sure you have x minus 3 in parentheses because you want x minus 3 grouped together. And now go to table setup, second TBL set or the window button. Make sure it's set up to be independent variable is ask because I want just these numbers plugged into my function. And then go to second graph or second table and your table will be blank. If it's not blank, you can hit the delete button and delete all those entries in a table that you have earlier. So if you plug in negative 7 to this function, you'll get negative 1 tenth. If you plug in negative 97, it's negative 0 0.01. Negative 997, you get negative 0 0.001. And if you do the same for the other values, so as x approaches negative 30, it looks like as the x values are growing more and more negative, the y values are getting closer and closer to 0. They're getting smaller and smaller in magnitude. So the limit is 0. So the y values approach 0 as x approaches negative infinity, which means the relationship with horizontal asymptotes is that the y values are getting closer and closer to 0. That means you're getting closer and closer to the x-axis. That's a horizontal asymptote as x goes to negative infinity. Okay, now number 2. Find the limit as x approaches positive infinity for this function. So again, we're going to use a graphing calculator to find out what these values are for the y values for this function. The function should already be entered under y equals. So your table should be blank. If it's not blank, use the delete button to delete all those entries from the last table. I want to plug in 13. I get 1 tenth, 103.01, 1003, you get 0 0.001, and then so on. Notice as x is growing arbitrarily large, because x is approaching to infinity, the y values are, again, getting closer and closer to zero. So since the y values are approaching zero, as x approaches infinity, that means that there must be a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis, or y equals zero. So that's the value of the limit. Okay, number three. This time we're going to look at what happens when you get closer and closer to three, and we knew that three was not part of the domain. So that means that you can't plug three into the function, but what happens when you get close to three from the left side or the right side? So number three says, find the limit as x approaches three from the left side for this function. So again, we're going to figure out what is the limit using the table of values. Okay, so if I plug in 2.9 into the function, I get negative 10. 2.99 is closer to 3. I get negative 100 for the y value. 2.999, and then so on. Notice as x gets closer and closer to 3 from the left side of it, so you're on the left side means your x values are less than 3, but you're getting closer to it. The y values are decreasing without bound. 
the y values are becoming more and more negative. So as x approaches 3 from the left side of the vertical asymptote, x equals 3, the y values are decreasing without bound, and it looks like the y values are tending towards negative infinity. So that's what the value of the limit is. Okay, and then one more. Number four, find out what the limit is as x approaches 3 from the right side for this function using a table of values. So this time we're going to use a table of values that starts with 3.1 because we're on the right side of x equals 3 this time. So you get 10 when you plug in 3.1. Now let's get closer to 3. 3.01, you get y value of 100. 3.001, the y value is 1,000, and then so on. So it looks like as x is getting closer and closer to 3 from the right side of it, so that means your x values are greater than 3, but they're getting closer to 3, the y values are 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. It looks like the y values are growing without bound. They're increasing without bound. So as x approaches 3 from the right side of x equals 3, the y values increase without bound towards positive infinity. So that's the value of the limit. The function is approaching infinity as x is approaching 3 from the right side. So now that we've talked about the last two theorems, there is actually a much more efficient way of finding horizontal and vertical asymptotes rather than looking at the graph or a table of values. You can actually look at the function and determine what the horizontal and vertical asymptotes are. So let's look at example 3. Locating asymptotes. Consider the rational function f of x equals x minus 2 times x plus 3 is the numerator, x attract 1 times x plus 2 times x attract 5 is the denominator. Locate all the vertical asymptotes and any horizontal asymptote that you may have. So let's start off with the vertical asymptotes. Okay, we know that the domain and vertical asymptotes are related to one another. So we know that if you want to locate vertical asymptotes, it's what makes the denominator zero, but not the numerator. So let's take the denominator, set it equal to zero. So if x minus one times x plus two times x minus five is equal to zero, that means x minus one could be zero, or x plus two is zero, or x minus five is zero. So x equals one, x equals negative two, and x equals five. If I plug in one into the numerator, it's not zero. So that means x equals one must be a vertical asymptote because it's what makes the denominator zero, but not the numerator. Same thing for the other two. If you plug negative two into the function, in the, into the numerator, you will not get zero. So it must be a vertical asymptote. And x equals five, same reason. It's a vertical asymptote as well because it does not make the numerator zero, but just the denominator. And be sure that when you're writing the equation of an asymptote, it's not just one, negative two, and five. It's x equals one, x equals negative two, and x equals five. You want equations for the asymptotes, not just the numbers. Okay, so now let's find out the horizontal asymptote. And we talked about this earlier in the video. If you want to find the horizontal asymptote, you want to find out what is the degree of the numerator and what's the degree of the denominator. So if you take the numerator and you multiply it out, you'll get x squared plus x subtract so six. So the degree of the numerator is the highest power of x, which is two. If you take the denominator and multiply it out, so if you take x minus one times x plus two, get that answer and then multiply by x minus five, you'll come up with x cubed, subtract so four x squared, subtract so seven x plus 10. The highest power of x that appears is three. So the degree of the denominator is three. So what happens when the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator? That means that the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis or the equation y equals zero. So um, on the far ends of the graph, the function will get closer and closer to the x-axis. So this is a good place to stop our video. In this video, we talked about how to find horizontal and vertical asymptotes algebraically with a graph and also with a table of values. And we also talked about the relationship between limits involving infinity and vertical and horizontal asymptotes. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about limits involving infinity with application problems.